Uh, next paper is uh, at the start of the agenda now, 27 versus 39 French bougie calibration in laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, a prospective randomized controlled trial, presented by Dr. Patricio Cal. Good afternoon. Thank you to Zaychis for the opportunity to present our trial. Um, these are only disclosure. Laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy has become a, an increasingly popular bariatric surgery. In 2013, it was the most performed bariatric surgery in Europe and was on par with gastric bypass in the US. But however, as Dr. Rosenthal said, we still don't have standardization for many of the technical details of the surgery, such as the ideal final shape of the G junction, or the need for reinforcement of the staple line, or the ideal bougie size to be used to calibrate the sleeve. It has been hypothesized that a narrower bougie would bring better weight loss at the risk of more leaks and more uh, reflux due to increased intraluminal pressure, and there has been some consensus on using bougies ranging from 32 to 36 French. However, this is not an evidence-based decision. So we decided to compare the outcomes with the use of different bougie sizes. We set up a randomized control trial. We randomized 126 patients to calibration over a, either a 27 or a 39 French bougie. Our inclusion criteria were BMI between 40 and 50, age between 20 and 70, and the absence of prior gastric surgery. All surgeries were performed by one surgeon, and both patients and the multidisciplinary team were blinded to the bougie size used. We calculated our sample size with a primary endpoint uh, of um, percentage of excess weight loss one year after surgery to be able to detect a six point difference, which in practice for an average patient is about three to four kilograms. Um, I don't know how to play the video, thank you. We used a standard five port techniques. We preferred uh, blue or gold loads on the antrum and then uh, blue loads on the body and fundus always uh, tightly uh, around the bougie. The starting point was determined by a line going from the right side of the esophagus through the incisura to the greater curvature, which is around six to eight uh, centimeters from the pylorus. We reinforce our staple line and we place a silicone drain to the subphrenic recess. Here you can see our population. They were comparable in means of age, uh, gender, BMI, and uh, weight loss before surgery. There was one complication in each group. Both were leaks. There was no mortality. And here you can see our results. The resected stomach was similar in both groups, as was weight loss six months after surgery. One year after surgery, the 27 French lost a little more weight than the 39 French, 75.6 versus 71.3. This was not statistically significant. Follow-up was 90.1% and 87.1%. And you can see here that even though there was not significance in the weight loss, when we see the box plot graphs, there's a tendency to uh, better weight loss in the 27 French and uh, um, a lower standard deviation. Also, when we looked at how many patients lost uh, above 50% excess weight loss, it was 96.5% against 85.2%. But again, this was not statistically significant. We saw three weaknesses to our study. First of all, the standard deviation for the primary endpoint was a little higher than we expected. Secondly, we did not strictly measure the antrum. We don't do this in our standard practice, and we decided to control only one variable to the surgery. And finally, follow-up may be a little bit too short to assess differences in weight loss. So we are willing to present our three-year data maybe next year. Nevertheless, it was a randomized controlled trial with a good sample size and a good follow-up percentage. So we can conclude that we saw no significant differences in volume of resected stomach, morbidity, or weight loss one year after surgery with different bougie sizes, and that probably a longer follow-up may be required. Thank you for your attention. Uh, while uh, members are coming up from the floor, I, I'll ask, did you consider having the surgeons blinded to the bougie size, or was it obvious? It was impossible. Them? Yes. It was very obvious. Thank you. First question. Uh, uh, George Fielding from New York. I'm just curious, what did you decide to do after this? 
Are you going to use a 27 or a 39? Uh, we usually use the 27 in our standard practice. So we kept using it at least until we see differences at three years or four years after surgery. And, and, and did you notice a difference in how they, how soon they were able to eat and all that sort of thing? Like, no. was it 100% of the patients was, were discharged uh, 24 hours after surgery, so we saw no differences, and there were not, no readmissions for, for vomiting. That wasn't what I meant. I meant sort of like a month or two later, was there a difference in the volume that these patients could eat, like a no. one month, two months? We didn't study that specifically either. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I think this is a great study. It's uh, extremely well done, and I applaud you for your efforts. I would suggest you probably have a type 2 statistical error. You just don't have enough patients in your study to show a difference. Uh, even though you did uh, do the sample size and uh, everything uh, correctly, um, I suspect that long term is also where you're going to see the big difference as these patients start to regain weight, uh, you know, the smaller bougie size, I would hypothesize, as probably you have as well, uh, aid in that, you know, filling up sense of satiety and everything else. Can you make some comments on that? Yeah, we believe the same thing. However, when you look, when you measure the bougies, there's only a four millimeter difference between both. I mean, it's like 50% uh, change in diameter, but it's only four millimeters. I don't know what kind of difference we're going to see in that. Okay. The other thing is that the, you know, we've all struggled with the leaks. The leaks after sleeve are much higher than after gastric bypass, and we've all struggled with them. They come late. And one of the hypotheses is that the smaller bougies put more pressure, intergastric pressure. You saw a leak in both groups. Yeah, Tell us about the two leaks in more detail. Were they up well, at the G junction? Actually, when the, did the, they, come? they both were at the G junction. The 27 French leak was much easier to manage than the other one, but it's only one case. And we usually use the 27 French. We've done almost 3,000 sleep gastrectomies, and we have a leak rate of around 0.8%, which I think is acceptable. We haven't had any, any difficult leaks also, so I, I don't know if, if it makes a difference. That's a fantastic leak rate. Uh, okay. Mark Pleatman in Detroit, just a technical question. What, your little vignette on the video, you show the, the stapler firing, but it just looks like you put it there, put it next to the bougie and fire. And the way I do it at least is I have my assistant retracting the stomach over to the side, and I nudge the bougie, you know, the stapler really close, and. Absolutely. So well, we also do that. We, okay. we look both ways and see okay. that the stomach is tight. Uh, I edited it for a, a very short video, but we do that. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.